Well, the SEC is at it once again, trying to conceal a document. This one could be the actual bombshell document that could end the case, or at least send the SEC into settlement discussions in very short order. In this video, I'm going to talk about what the SEC and Ripple have been doing going back and forth with letters to the judge and arguments for and against each other, and what Ripple is now accusing the SEC of possibly hiding. And here's a little bit of a hint. It revolves around the Ethereum free pass speech given by Bill Hinman. And this has been something that the SEC has been trying to hide very, very, very hard lately. So I'm gonna talk about what it is and what it could potentially show, and does Ripple actually know that it already exists already? And I'm also gonna talk about some more bullish news for Ripple, yet another big announcement, another great announcement for Ripple, another country, another major bank, using RippleNet technology. So I'm gonna tell you who the latest major players are to adopt RippleNet technology using the XRP token for cross-border payments. And I'm gonna talk about a cool new NFT project coming up that you won't wanna miss. In fact, it might look a little bit familiar to you depending on what age group you're in. And this NFT project goes far beyond just being a JPEG. So I'm gonna tell you about it in this video. Hey everyone, my name is Randy and welcome back to the Late Night Grind. Right now on this channel, we are covering the Ripple versus the SEC case but I'm also covering cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all these topics interest you, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the Late Night Grind community, and also don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so that YouTube will send you a notification when I release a new video. And if you're feeling generous, I'd appreciate it if you do two things, smash the thumbs up button and watch this video all the way to the end. Those really are the two best things you can do to support a YouTube channel. So if you do that, I greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Well, I always mention the two best things that you can do to support this YouTube channel is of course, smash the thumbs up button and watch to the end. But the other thing is by supporting sponsors. And the content I'd like to talk about right now is a, is a new sponsor of the channel and, it, and they're working on a really cool project. This is, this is a new NFT project. And what they're doing is giving the late night grind community exclusive access exclusive early access to a whitelist where you can mint one of these NFTs, get your hands on it, before anybody else. This is a really cool project. This project is called the Schmurfs. No, not the Smurfs, if you remember the cartoon from back in the day. This is the Schmurfs, and this is a really cool collection of 3D NFTs. It's top tier art, and it has some really cool metaverse applications that NFTs are finally starting to jump into. This is one of those projects. So I'm gonna link all of their uh, socials uh, in the description down below. You can see their Twitter, their Discord, it's very active. Uh, as well as go to their website, you can check out their roadmap, all the things that they have coming down the line. Now this whitelist, now this new NFT mint is gonna be happening on April 3rd, so I will put a link in the description below. You can actually go and sign up as a member of the Late Night Grind community, put your name on that list so you get early access to mint one of these NFTs. And here's why this NFT project, I think, is one of these to keep is one of these to keep an eye on for the future. Because a lot of NFTs are basically just considered JPEGs. There are. There's very few with utility. But this one, among some of the others, are finally starting to get into the more utility, more application part of it. This one specifically is going to be entering the metaverse. They're gonna be using these NFTs within the metaverse. Not only that, they have planned land acquisitions inside the metaverse, and there's some tokenomics that they're gonna be uh, talking about and announcing during that time. So there's a really cool roadmap that you can go ahead and check out on the website below. So if you wanna get in the ground floor and jump on one of these NFT projects before it absolutely blows up, who knows, it could be the next Board Ape Yacht Club. Then you wanna go ahead and click on that link in the description and uh, put that and fill out that form and you'll get early access. I'm also gonna be uh, giving a little bit of a reminder before that April 3rd mint date. So, so if you wanna help out this channel, you can do that by following and supporting this sponsor and their really cool project. Okay, so now let's talk about Ripple because there's a lot of things going on. Very Every day there's good news. Seemingly every day there's good news for Ripple, the company. Today, XRP was actually running right along with Bitcoin. Uh, a couple of short squeezes, a couple of big runs, had it, had it climbing three, four, five percent earlier this evening. So what's the big announcement for Ripple? Well, John Deaton, who is uh, one of the attorneys taking on the SEC, he's very active on Twitter, and he was actually pointing out a tweet uh, from one of Australia's major banks that someone pointed out that one of Australia's four major banks actually states on their website that they've actually partnered with Canada's largest bank, the CIBC, 
and partnering them to use RippleNest technology, that's the on-demand liquidity system, using XRP as the settlement token for cross-border payments, and they're doing it as a proof of concept. Now, I saw this tweet and I thought that's very bullish, but we're gonna be seeing this more and more. Now, we've seen different parts of the world having different uh, remittance corridors set up, but this is one where it's actually a bank-to-bank cross-border payment instant settlement system between banks. This is what's gonna start happening more and more. So right off the bat, there's big news as Canada's biggest bank, the CIBC, now stating that they are officially partnering with RippleNet to use their system as a cross-border payment system. And it's looking like there's even bigger news when we're looking at the Ripple versus the SEC case. So just today, early, so just earlier today, more documents came out and what it is is basically Ripple pretty much either they know something that we don't or they're at least alluding to the fact they're trying to insinuate that they do. So here's how it goes. After Judge Torres denied the SEC's motion to strike Ripple's fair notice defense, as well as denying the individual defendants on Ripple's side uh, to have their cases thrown out, they also got denied. The SEC came back to the judge and wrote a letter saying that the things that they have to produce, the, the Esterbrook notes, the 63 different uh, emails, all the different drafts uh, regarding the Bill Hinman, the Ethereum free pass speech, even though they don't call it that, that all these documents are now irrelevant because of all the denials that Judge Torres just handed down. So that's basically their way of hiding more documents. No shocker there. So Ripple actually came back, and this is what's really cool about what they're arguing. According to attorney Jeremy Hogan, it actually blew his mind. Uh, but don't worry, he is doing okay. He's recovering comfortably. And what caused that? Well, it's what Ripple pointed out in their response. And if you look at his link in the description below, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, this link is posted there as well. So here's what Ripple said in arguing their point. And I'm summarizing a bit here, but basically what they stated was that due to the fact that there was 52 different iterations of Bill Hinman's Ethereum free pass speech, and the fact that they gave in the fact that the division of corporate finance Bill Hinman gave considerable consideration to a very similar cryptocurrency and decided that it in fact was not a security. Then how could the individual defendants, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson of Ripple, knowingly or recklessly knew that the sales of XRP could constitute uh, an investment with a common enterprise, which is typically what is used to describe a security. Well, the reason, well, the fact of the matter is they couldn't have known. But here's the one sentence in this response they want to pay attention to. Since in his speech, Director of Division of Corporate Finance, Bill Hinman, had analyzed a substantially similar digital asset, maybe even XRP itself, and concluded it was not a security. So it sounds like Ripple's counsel already knows that there's probably a document where XRP was already decided that it's not a security, or at least that's what they're attempting to allude to. Now, this is one of the first times that I've actually seen Ripple's general counsel starting to turn the whole Ethereum thing, the whole Ethereum is not a security, against the SEC by saying, well, listen, this is an extremely similar product to, to what XRP is. So if that's not a security, how could XRP be a security? Or at the very least, how could Brad and Chris think it's a security when it's very similar to something that you just considered not a security? It's finally starting to come out. Now that is some very big bullish news for Ripple side in the SEC case. Now there's a couple other pieces of information that I'm going to talk about in my next video that Jeremy Hogan's been that Jeremy Hogan's been analyzing. Number one, talking about when this case might end, and it involves summary judgment and Ripple's thoughts on it and the dates that they're actually preparing for. So I'm going to talk about that in the next video. So if you want to make sure that you follow along with that as well as all these other stories that I talked about, make sure you subscribe to the Late Night Grind community. And like I said, if you want to support this channel, go ahead and click on that link in the description below where you can be joined, where you can be added to the whitelist, where you get an opportunity to mint one of the really cool NFTs that's going to have some cool metaverse applications into the future. Because in my opinion, those are the ones that are actually going to last, not just the cute little JPEGs. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the very end for smashing that thumbs up button. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.